Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I wanted to talk about immutable infrastructure. What is it, really? I was in a conversation with somebody the other day and they said, the only day two operations that I have is to deploy a new cluster in a new resource group. My infrastructure is immutable. It gets replaced, not modified. Once you start mutating infrastructure, you are hosed. Your new deployments will have everything you mutated in the old deployment because reality. Now this argument was being made basically saying that what's the point of doing a second or a third or a fourth Terraform apply to an already deployed environment? Once you shotgun something up into the cloud, you shouldn't touch it again. Otherwise, oh no, you're no longer doing immutable infrastructure. But is that really what immutable infrastructure means? The word immutable essentially means that you can't change something in place. You can't modify, you can't do an edit operation. You do a destroy and a replace. And why this has become desirable is because of the long-term consequences of click ops where you manually provision stuff. Human beings go touch an environment, something breaks, they go touch the environment again. Something breaks, they go touch the environment again. And that original desired state configuration continues to drift further and further and further away from its original desired state. And it becomes murkier and murkier for the maintainers of that environment to figure out what is actually desired state. So the idea about immutable infrastructure is that if something goes wrong, if something breaks, you don't have a human being go touch the environment. You just delete that aspect of the environment reprovision it from the original desired state, in this case, infrastructure as code. Now, the way this manifests itself in VM-based workloads is you have, let's say, a Terraform template that references a virtual machine image. And that virtual machine image is for your web app. And then you have another virtual machine image that Terraform references for your app server or your REST API. Then you use Terraform to provision that environment. And let's just call it prod. Now the virtual machines are all built usually by something like Packer and we produce a virtual machine image by taking a certain version of the code, let's say version one of the application code, and we produce a version one of the virtual machine image for both the web app and the app server. And with version one of that virtual machine image, Terraform goes and produces our environment for version one. And let's say inside of this production environment, we have virtual machines, doesn't matter which ones they are. Let's say we have a few of them and one of them becomes unhealthy. Well, rather than having a human being, let's say Joe, go log into that machine and fix it in the true click ops fashion, we already have a template in Terraform and a virtual machine image for version one of our application that encapsulates the desired state of our application. So instead of having Joe go manually fix the server, we can simply run Terraform again by doing a Terraform apply and go fix the instance of our application that has failed. Now this is following the infrastructure as code approach and using infrastructure as code in this approach achieves immutable infrastructure. Whereas using click ops or Joe is absolutely mutable. And this is also where that age old DevOps euphemism comes from pets versus cattle. Joe is maintaining pets and infrastructure as code or our mutable infrastructure is maintaining a herd of cattle. I.e. if our pet gets sick, we're going to go take it to the vet and give it medicine and take care of it and nurse it back to health. Whereas if it's cattle, we pop it in the head and we make a new one. Now, immutable and mutable infrastructure can be achieved in many different ways. In fact, there are even infrastructure as code tools that you can use to implement mutable infrastructure. A good example of that would be something like Ansible. With Ansible, we're basically replacing Joe with a playbook. And rather than having Joe go make updates to that existing server, we're just going to have Ansible go rerun its playbook in order to bring back the desired state on that machine. The Terraform has already provisioned the machines, so we don't need to touch anything. But Ansible, instead of Joe, is going to go nurse our pet server back to health. So in both of these situations, we are achieving mutable infrastructure using both click ops and infrastructure as code. So as we can see, infrastructure as code as an approach is independent of whether we implement immutable or mutable infrastructure. It all depends on how we maintain the change of our application's environment. Are we modifying an existing virtual machine or are we drop creating a new virtual machine from the original desired state? Now, as we move forward in time using immutable infrastructure, our application developers are hard at work on a new version of our application. Let's call it 
v2. So with the new version v2 of our application, just like with v1, we package up a new virtual machine and we replace the v1 virtual machine with the v2 virtual machine. We update our Terraform, which used to have references to v1 in it, to reference v2, and then we rerun Terraform apply. And now what Terraform is going to do is going to perform an immutable infrastructure operation by replacing these VMs with v2 versions of the VMs instead of v1s. Now, when you work with virtual machine-based workloads, this can be rather disruptive to your production environment and would likely require you to schedule an outage window in order for this to happen. Because when you run Terraform applied, just by updating the virtual machine image, Terraform is going to notice that the virtual machine images on these VMs are v1, and it's going to create a plan that's going to replace those v1 images with v2. That's going to cause each of those virtual machines to be destroyed and recreated with a new version of the virtual machine image, v2. Now, this all happens in parallel, but again, it is a bit unpredictable about when those virtual machines come down and when they come back online. So in your release process, you will have to account for that brief period of time where virtual machines are turning off and turning back on. When you're working with other types of workloads like container-based workloads or serverless workloads, orchestrators like Kubernetes or whatever your serverless framework is that you're using typically handles that transition from the old version of the application code to the new version of the application code in a seamless fashion. So you don't have to worry about this outage window like you do with virtual machine-based workloads. So that's also something to consider. And just like with virtual machine-based workloads and implementing immutable infrastructure, container-based workloads and serverless-based workloads all share an immutable artifact that represents the desired state configuration of the application just in a different form. With virtual machines, it's a virtual machine image. With containers and Kubernetes, it's a Docker image. And with serverless, it's usually a package like a zip file or something like that. So as we can see, we can achieve immutable infrastructure even when we make changes to our Terraform code. So Terraform as a tool, just like ARM or BICEP or other, other declarative infrastructure as code tools that have their own orchestration built into it, are already geared up for implementing immutable infrastructure. But what about our friend that said the only day two operations that he does is deploy a new cluster to a new resource group? Well, that, my friends, I guess could be considered a form of immutable infrastructure, but a better name for that is called a blue-green deployment strat. So what our friend is doing is he's defining an infrastructure as code template and he's provisioning an environment, let's call it blue. And rather than, rather than making changes to his code, let's add a little change here, and then reapplying a second time, our friend is just provisioning a new environment called green and then cutting over from blue to green. So in essence, our friend has a very, very strict version of immutable infrastructure where not even any of the infrastructure's code, where he's not even tolerating any changes to the infrastructure's code at all. So in this case, we really just have version one of our infrastructure's code that goes to the blue environment, and then we make changes to that, and we have a version two of our infrastructure's code that we then provision to our green environment. While technically this is following the principles of infrastructure as code, this is an absolute extreme case. And as we saw before, is not required to achieve immutable infrastructure using infrastructure as code. Immutable infrastructure is achieved simply by maintaining immutable artifacts for V1 or V2 of our application and replacing, not modifying existing resources that are deployed like these virtual machines to change their configuration. And so in doing this, we can modify our Terraform, our BICEP, or our ARM templates or whatever it might be to change the virtual image version number from V1 to V2 and still be doing immutable infrastructure. Likewise, we can also make additional changes to our Terraform code, adding additional services or Azure resources, let's say in V3. And as long as we produce a new version of the application V3, let's say, let's say maybe, maybe V3 Maybe V3 of our application is now introducing a storage account or something like that to store images or videos. Um, our application code has to change. We package that into a virtual machine image or a Docker image or a zipped artifact if we're using serverless. And we modify our Terraform code to add a storage account that our application code is going to be using. Terraform, Bicep, ARM, whatever infrastructure as code tool we're using can update the environment by adding the storage account as long as the existing resources, i.e. these virtual machines running v2, are now updated using v3 of our application using a replacement approach rather than modifying them in line using either Joe or Ansible to get the job done.
So I hope this helps draw a line between what immutable and mutable infrastructure is and how it relates to infrastructure as code and how different infrastructure as code tools have greater affinity for either immutable or mutable, such as Ansible being more geared towards mutable infrastructure, i.e. maintaining pets, and Terraform being more geared towards immutable infrastructure, i.e. maintaining cattle, whether that's using virtual machines and virtual machine-based images that are built using Packer or Docker images built using Docker, or serverless code that's packaged using whatever proprietary tool that it needs in whatever proprietary format it expects deployment packages in order to capture an immutable artifact that represents the desired configuration of that application within that environment. Bottom line, your Terraform code can change as long as you're not affecting the configuration at the operating system or application level, and the operating system and application configuration is encapsulated into an immutable and versioned artifact that the infrastructure as code then references. And both of these approaches can be used with a deployment strategy of blue-green deployment, where you want to completely replace an old environment, whether it was deployed using ClickOps, Terraform, or Ansible, using a new environment provisioned with whatever tool you decide on. Anyways, I hope that helps. If you're enjoying this content and want to see more of me on my whiteboard, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Also consider channel membership, it really helps out a lot, and allows you to declare yourself officially as an Azure Terraformer. That's it for me. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.